We've been doing this every Monday morning since, well, since as long as Iros could remember. This particular chess game was the last game we played before everything changed for Sherlock Holmes. The woman I am, of course, referring to. No point in being clever, Watson. Your bishop is mine. Ah. Is it really, Sherlock? Obviously. Best concede the game now and save yourself a defeat. But I can still... You plan to take my queen, yes? Well, I... Yes, Watson? <sighs> yes, Sherlock. Take my queen and then have your way with her? <laughs> oh, good night, Holmes. There is no need for crude gestures just because I've beaten you. And there you have exposed yourself, my dear friend. Oh! Naming me by my surname would surely show you are taking this game much more seriously than you wish to put across. You are annoying me, Sherlock. All part of the game, Watson. Anyway, like I said, I have you beat. Fawn the last hurdle again. Never celebrate while there's time left. I could still win. Oh, I doubt it. That's what you get for trying to be clever. I just win every time. Let me try something. Ah, a good move. Quite. Uh, but not good enough. And I win, I'm afraid. In principle alone, you may have won the battle, but you will lose the war. Well, I'm intrigued to find out which way. But beforehand, we did say the winner must make the tea. Indeed. Mrs. Hudson, tea, now! Kettle's boiling. Shall we go again? Uh, unfortunately, we have to cut this short, my friend. I promised Mary a day out shopping and then dinner tonight. I can't say I'm surprised. What's that supposed to mean? You have settled into domestic life happily, Watson. Some of us have to, Holmes. We can't all live in the war like you. And yet you keep coming to visit me. Sherlock, I... Uh, Mr. Holmes, I forgot... The tea? No worries. I thought it was finished a bit quickly. A note was posted this morning. Oh? Well, Holmes? Uh, another small case. Something I should look into today. Nothing you need my help for? Not at all, Watson. Now, go. Go and spend the day with Mary. Holmes sent myself and Mrs. Hudson away quickly. He watched me leave from the window. It was rather suspicious of him. But that was his way. The poor man was never able to leave the war behind him. we just entered a new decade, and the Great War was still falling him like a bad penny. Ever the strategist. I decided to forget about it. When the cab called up, I realized that I was not at my chosen destination. I was in the grounds of a large mansion. I tried to protest to my driver, but he simply told me that he was under the strictest of instructions. A man called out to me from the doors and marched over to me. He looked over me, expectant of something in return. I looked back silently. Well? Sir, who are you? Why have you summoned me here? I made plans for the day and Those I- Those plans are cancelled. Excuse me, I will not- You are in the grounds of the Prime Minister's estate. Excuse me? My name is Mycroft Holmes. I'm sure you know my brother very well by now. Brother? You're Holmes' brother! The clue is in the surname, Mr. Watson. Please, follow me. Wait, I'm going to meet the Prime Minister himself? Don't be stupid. You are here by my command. Now please, follow me. Take a seat, Mr. Watson. Um, I'll stand, thank you. I insist. As do I. Why have I been summoned? I very much insist that you sit down. Why? Would you usually talk back to your commanding officer? Excuse me? You were in the war, yes? A foot soldier. I did my duty. Yet you rebel. We are not in the war anymore, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> the war still rages on, John Watson. Well, if you have nothing else to say, I'll be leaving your company. This is a matter of national urgency, Mr. Watson. You can always call your brother. He and I don't quite see eye to eye these days. I thought talking to you would help. That's a funny way of putting it. So, what do you need our assistance with? It is of a complex nature. 
which is why I suggested you sit down. Just tell me. I have been given instructions by Mr. Lloyd George himself to locate missing information on his behalf. Missing information? Quite. There were some unfortunate circumstances. A burglary? Not quite as straightforward. Well? A woman. Unfortunate indeed. We don't know much about the woman, only that she used a false alias to gain access to the Prime Minister. What alias was that? Arlia Greaves. Good place to start. We have already tried that, Mr. Watson. No leads. Holmes has his ways. I'm sure he does. So, why was she permitted near the Prime Minister? She was a hired woman, like many other women in the Soho area. Makes the men look proper, you understand. A married man with another woman? That's no sense of proper that I understand. This was a private event, Mr. Watson. You do not understand the politics like I do. No, I remember that well. Excuse me? So she has stolen some information. How viable? Irreplaceable. We've been able to track down some of her links, which show her formerly part of the German front in the Great War. She was then sold to the Russian mobsters who arrived in London less than a fortnight ago. So, find the Russians, find this mysterious woman. I would assume so, but I would advise caution. Of course. Please provide updates as to your findings. Um, why? Contrary to Sherlock's beliefs, I worry about him. Constantly. I see. Is that why you're sending him on this errand for you? Not at all. I would prefer it that my true feelings were left unknown to him. <sighs> Fine. I haven't mentioned a figure? Don't bother. You don't want payment for this. I run a surgery. I have the income I need. <laughs> you're very loyal, Mr. Watson. Loyal to those who matter, yes. I understand you fled your home country. We're done. I got back in my cab and left, straight back to Baker Street. Would have to apologise to Mary later. I was able to return to Baker Street within the hour, and I ran straight up to Holmes's room. Watson, back so soon? I had bets you'd be back by three. Enough games, Sherlock. What the hell was that? What was what? Well? Well, judging from your clothes, it looks like you've been sweating profusely. Your eyes are strange, showing that you've been placed under some immense stress and you are shaking, which implies that overall... I was interrogated! By who? Your brother. Mycroft? Why? What does he want? You're not going to ask how I am! Well, I can see that you are alive and well and in front of me with no immediate physical injury and looks to be only mental strain. However, as you calm down, the memory of the event will fade from your mind, so I'm asking you, what did Mycroft want? He wants us on a case, Holmes. Sherlock sat me down and we went over the story twice. He listened deeply and asked me many questions, but he was right. As I calmed down, the whole conversation with Mycroft became a blur. Maybe that was his intention. Well, Watson? As you've said, the case is a very unique one. What about your case? It may surprise me, Watson, but that was also relating to this case. One of Mycroft's friends, no less, Alistair Stewart, was the name he gave. This was the meeting location? Mr. Holmes? Ah, hello. You are Alistair, as signed on this note. That I am. Alistair Stewart. So... Let me spare you from any small talk you may want to indulge yourself in. What can I do for you? I work on behalf of Mr. Lloyd George. The Prime Minister? Please, I ask that you use discretion. Of course, I understand. I assume that this is relating to what you meant in your note. Yes, I would say so. Well, that much is obvious. Mycroft Holmes informed me that you were the man to discuss this with. I might be. Please, proceed. So what did he say? Very much the same as Mycroft did with you. So why did he need to separate us? My brother and I have not, shall we say... Seen eye to eye? Well, if that's how Mycroft puts it, 
The war taught me a lot about him, let's say. Nonetheless, Alistair gave me some detail on what Irene Adler has stolen. Wait, who's Irene Adler? The woman we are searching for. Mycroft didn't mention a name. <laughs> that is why he is asking for our help, Watson. I had the Baker Street Irregulars track her down. She lives in a small house on Allen Street, number 16 to be precise, and I will need you to track her down for me. But Sherlock, I promised Mary that I'd take her shopping. That can wait until later. No, I can't. I have a dinner reservation planned. You're going into battle for me, Watson. There will be dinner when there is time for dinner. I have plans, Holmes. As do I, and they must be fulfilled. Whilst you sit here waiting for me to finish the job. Not at all, Watson. I'll be meeting with one of my informants. They know the streets and will likely know this mysterious Irene Adler. Can you manage that? You know of my methods, Watson. Yes, as you keep saying. I arrived at Allen Street in just under two hours. The midday shoppers were taken to the streets, and I worried about Mary. Ever since she and I started our marriage, balancing the life between Sherlock Holmes and Mary Watson had become more difficult. I waited hours for any sign of movement from the house. The sun was setting when Miss Adler finally left the house. She was exactly as Holmes had described her. Cunning. Powerful. Attractive. Three words I never thought I'd hear Sherlock say honestly, but I was looking at her leave the house, so I followed her. I followed her for some time, then she turned into an alley to meet a mysterious man. I could barely hear them, so I had to get closer. I hope you haven't been waiting too long. Only ten minutes. And I sincerely apologise for the delay. Have you got it? Yes. All in this parcel. 600 was all I can manage at the moment. Will that be enough? For now, I'm sure. I can bring the rest of the docks tomorrow, just before you leave. That would be very helpful, Miss Adler. The man walked away quickly with the parcel. Was that 600 pounds? How did Miss Adler get so much money? Could it be the information? I was stuck on whether to follow the man or Miss Adler, but Holmes was especially clear in his command. Follow Miss Adler, so I did. As I continued to follow, she stopped at a flyer stand and collected some flyers, then went to a nearby coffee shop. She spent another two hours in that coffee shop, as far as I could recall anyway. Sir. Sir. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I'm so sorry. You you fell asleep, sir. We are closing for the day. For the day? Where is everyone? Like I said, we are closing. Miss Adler? Excuse me? She's gone. Sir, you haven't actually bought anything here? You must go. Yes, of course. I'm so sorry. Hello. Are you Keith? Mr. Holmes. How did you get me? Sam put us in contact. I need some information. Alright. Well, we need a walk, because otherwise people will find us suspicious. What is it you wanted? I've recently been hired by someone who represents the Prime Minister. He has got himself into a bad situation, which could lead to a public disgrace. And what do you want me for? He says that he was tricked by a woman who has got to several people within the government, and she is known as Irene Adler. Ah, yes. I come into contact with her before. In fact, I've worked with the people she's worked with. Well, I need some information about Miss Adler, because I've been asked to retrieve this information. From what I was told, she worked for a successful spy in Germany during the war. When the war ended, she was forcibly recruited into a small group of Russian nationalists who uh, disagree with the outcome of the war. So she's been working for them ever since? Yes. I also do uh, work for them occasionally. Mainly disposal. If you're looking for them, then uh, this is their logo. They often brandish people they kill with it. I'll try not to cross them then. If you want my advice, the people she often takes advantage of are... Washed up, an alcoholic. But she did this to the Prime Minister. 
if you go in and try and get the information under disguise, then you will need to look like a politician. Can I please keep that sheet with the mark that you have? By all means. Good luck, Mr. Holmes. Don't let her get the better of you. Trust me, I shan't. Thank you again. I shall go and convene with my colleague. Damn it, Watson, where are you? I wouldn't do that, Mr. Holmes. Miss Adler, I presume? Irene Adler. What do I owe this pleasure? Are you always this nice to your clients? I didn't realise you were a client. It was my understanding that potential clients came to visit you. You would be correct in that assumption, although I always hear the case with my trusted friend and colleague, Dr. John Watson. The same man I sent to follow you earlier today, whom I have not heard from since. I was coming to that. I'm sure. Now, where is he? Asleep. In a coffee shop, I presume. You want the information I stole, correct? That is what my client has asked for. Good old David. He was sweet. Embarrassed? Do I need to be? No, but I've read about the Holmes boys. You two are quite sweet, really. Your brother, Mycroft, he's very interesting. I'm sure he is. You have questions? Quite. Why is a German turned Russian spy operating in England under false identities? Ah, so you figured that one out then. And yet you don't use your native accent. Been too long, Mr. Holmes. You have to live the job. Some of us can't escape. Am I right? <clears throat> I don't believe you'd come here for no reason, so I deduce... Your friend was following me. That's all. That one. He's very clumsy. I deduce that you're testing me. You're clever, Miss Adler. Cleverer than the rest of them. I'll take that as a compliment. You don't need to ask me anything because you want to prove I'm right for the job. So you've not handed over the information, I gather. Very good. But why? The Russian mob? They've hired you for this, so why turn against them? Why aren't you fulfilling their wish? Who says I've turned against them? You spotted Watson. Anyone could spot him. He's not the spy type. But you were looking for anyone following you. That's the point. You're expecting someone any day now, aren't you? Tell me, Irene. I'm a woman for hire. I am hired by the rich and powerful to stand next to them and look good. It lends itself to a little espionage in some cases. Many cases. My employers are powerful, Mr. Holmes. The top 1% of the Russian conglomerate. But you're not a woman who wants to be hired. You want out. This information is my ticket out of London, away from the Russian mob and the government. Give it three years, and they'll have given up on finding me. You haven't thought this through. And what about you, Mr. Holmes? I see the way you look at me. Love is for children, Miss Adler. Does it have to be? No. Not love. You're nervous. Very nervous. It's in my German blood, isn't it? You've read my file, Miss Adler. You tell me. Seven years working as a strategist along the very best of England, sending soldiers out to battle. And now, you're stood face to face with a German in your own rooms. Anything could happen. I'm afraid not, Miss Adler. I see a lot of sadness in those eyes, Sherlock. You're a man who can't let go of war. Your skills with deduction are certainly impressive. Now, I must ask you to leave. What was that? They're here. Who are? What have you done? Go, there's a back door out there. Well, this is unexpected. Where is she? Keith, what are you doing here? Where is she, Mr. Holmes? Miss Adler, you mean? Stop stalling! Oh, I, I can assure you, Keith, she is not here. I won't ask you again, Mr. Holmes. I said she's not here. 
What? I'm afraid Mr. Holmes was lying. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Miss Adler. Wait. Stop. Miss Adler, who were they? Thugs. Well, obviously, but they weren't Russian. They work for them. And in time, the real Russians will be here. I must go. But wait, I must see you again. You're not the first man I've heard that from, Mr. Holmes. I'll find you. What is going on here? Mrs. Hudson, call Inspector Lestrade. Tell him I've just had an attempt on my life. It was the next day that I arrived at 221B Baker Street. I found myself having to present my identification to two police officers who were stationed outside. The one night I spent with Mary and something like this happened. Typical. Ah, oh, Watson, there you are. Sherlock, why are there police officers stationed outside the house? Oh, do take a seat. I've made a cup of tea just for you. Well, thank you. Oh, it's stone cold. Yes, you were a bit later than I expected. What happened, Sherlock? Where were you last night, Watson? I told you. I was having dinner with Mary. I let her down with the shopping. I couldn't let her down with dinner also. I understand then that you must have some unimportant information for me in this case. You would be correct, Holmes. You lost her at a coffee shop, no less. Were you having me followed? Holmes, this has gone far enough. On the contrary, Watson. I did not have you followed. For whilst you slept in a coffee shop, Miss Adler herself arrived here last night. She... she did? She did. And despite all your years in service, you do not seem to possess any skill of subtlety or stealth. Furthermore, you abandon all responsibility of letting your colleague know any of the information of which you gathered. That's not fair. I am allowed to have a life outside of this- Not when the enemy is still out there, Watson. Not on my watch. We are supposed to be friends, Holmes. I am no longer a soldier, just as you are no longer a war strategist. I will not be spoken to like this. I will speak to you any bloody way I want. We are not in the war any longer. We're in London, 1921. This house was attacked last night, Watson, don't you see? What? Holmes, as angry as he was, explained what happened. Irene Adler, originally from Germany, was drafted into the Russian mob and brought to London. Now she seeks to escape London with the information. But Sherlock Holmes had a plan. He always had a plan. So, what do we say to her? My hope is that she's not already dead when we get there. What? Last night at 11pm, British members within the Russian mob stormed my rooms and I was almost left killed. If it wasn't for the woman. She was armed. She killed those men. She will pose a larger threat than I. She has the information, whereas I only have knowledge of her intentions. So why not pick you off first? It's very charming of you, Watson. However, Adler is the one who can take action. Stop her first, seize the information, kill anyone who knows about it. Including myself? You are correct. Holmes, look. The door lock has been snapped. Let's hope we're not too late. Come along, Watson. Ah! Unhand him! Stand still, Mr. Holmes. Where is she? Oh, she is perfectly safe upstairs. You and your friend, well... Maybe not for long. Do not harm him. Quiet. Walk upstairs. Don't try anything. With a gun pointed at the back of my head... Holmes and I walked up the stairs. We were led into Miss Adler's private study, where the woman herself was on her knees with a bruised cheek. It was obvious that they had been beating her. Thank God you're here. Shut up, Miss Adler. You, down on your knees. Come on, I don't think this is... No. All right, all right. Would you like me on my knees? Not you. I see. Open the safe. Yes, I thought you were going to that. Uh, you are of Russian descent, I see. Quite interesting. What would the Russians want in England? Open the safe now, please. I'm afraid I don't know the code. Miss Atlas says you do. I'm sorry. Well, I can assure you I don't. She says you do. Then she is lying. For goodness sake, she knows the code. Ask her. I would do it if I didn't know what was already in the safe. Which is? 
the information. And likely a trick that Miss Adler has up her sleeve. A trick that you, Mr. Holmes, would not be aware of. You are sure of this? Very sure. This is not one of the normal safes I've cracked. A new model in light of the law, it would seem. Quite. It's a six-numbered code, so one wrong move and the safe freezes itself. Get it wrong and my associate will kill Dr. Watson. Understood. Last night the woman was talking. She was biding her time with me, testing me, so she said. But the numbers, where were the numbers? But I've read about the Holmes boys. You two are quite sweet, really. Two? That one, he's very clumsy. One? The top 1% of the Russian conglomerate. One? Give it three years, and they'll have given up on finding me. Three? Oh, come on, the next number. Seven years working as a strategist along the very best of England. Seven? Now, the last number. Where was it? She... She didn't say another number. Take your time, Mr. Holmes. You would not like to make a mistake. Quite. You're not the first man I've heard that from, Mr. Holmes. Oh, thank goodness. You clever man. <laughs> now, open the safe, Mr. Holmes. Vatican cameos. Adler, dine! Oh. Ah, take that. Are you alright? I will be. Thank you, Sherlock. Of course. Watson, be a good man to get the information from the safe. We need to get Miss Adler to safety. Are you seriously letting her go? Watson! All right, all right. You're a kind man, Sherlock Holmes. Never accuse me of that, Miss Adler. Now, we really must be going. I've got it, Holmes. I'll check the contents. You will do no such thing, Watson. That is private information for Her Majesty's government. I will not have you implicate yourself in this scandal. <sighs> Very good, Holmes. What about me? Pack some things, Miss Adler. Holmes and I will see safe passage for you. I will call Lestrade. This has been a busy day for him. Holmes and I took Miss Adler to the docks in Shenfield. I think Holmes was quite taken with the woman. He always seemed such a uptight, stern gentleman. However, Irene Adler had given him something that I never could. A heart. Once he had returned to his rooms, Holmes secluded himself to his private study. I decided to leave him to his own devices until he called for me. I returned the envelope with the information to Mycroft, whom was very grateful. He too did not wish to open the envelope. I imagined the information was to be opened by the Prime Minister himself. Holmes did eventually call for me two days later. When I arrived, Holmes greeted me and spoke solemnly. Watson, I, uh, would like to apologise. For, for what, Sherlock? My manner of late has been most unkind. Of late? Very well. Point taken, Watson. Of course, Sherlock. I understand you are very focused on the war, as I was. But like myself, you need to move on. Find something new. Quite. Following these leads, being a consulting detective, it's... What I feel I can do best, you understand. I do. I'll be here to support you as much as I can. But please remember, I am married. <laughs> yes, of course. Mr. Holmes? Yes, Mrs. Hudson, what is it? You have some mail here for you. Ah, oh, thank you. And an urgent call from Inspector Lestrade? Oh, what is it now? Another crime to solve? Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Oh, Le Lestrade, to what do I owe the pleasure? Young woman's body found washed up on the docks in Shenfield. A body? Could it be her, Holmes? There's not a moment to lose, Lestrade. But we watched her get on a boat, Holmes. Evidently. There may have been Russian operatives anywhere, Watson. Just this way, gents. Watson, please wait here. Are you sure? I am a medical doctor. Please, my friend. Very well. Call for me if you require my assistance. Of course. 
I may be no Sherlock Holmes, but even I could just say that this was a very private matter for my friend. I had respected his wishes. Five minutes passed, then Holmes returned from the side of the washed out Docklands. He did not look pleased. Inspector Lestrade followed behind. What do you want me to do with the body? Leave it with me, Inspector. This is something I'll bring up with my brother. Very well, Holmes. Holmes, wait. Back to Baker Street, Watson. Was it her? He looked broken. His look said more words than he could ever speak. We arrived at Baker Street and Holmes finally spoke. I'm so sorry, Holmes. Not to matter, Watson. We have more crimes to solve. It is understandable to be upset, Sherlock. It's obvious she meant a lot to you. Oh, my dear Watson, she's not dead. But you said... I said that to throw the Russians off her tail. We did indeed see her get on that boat, but the body, whoever she is, is not Irene Adler. It must be, surely. A very close resemblance, perhaps, but key traits in Miss Adler's appearance gave the game away. Her eyes, for example, they were not the same. <clears throat> of course, you would notice that. Anyway, surely we should investigate, find out what really happened. It was evident the moment I arrived what had really happened to the drunk woman. Drunk? She was dead, how could you tell? Her body was no more than six hours dead. The faint smell of brandy was in the air surrounding her body, and when you look above, there was a slight red dried patch on the boat hooks attached to the docks. The woman had gotten drunk and fallen into the washed out seabed. The only reason why she looked so waterlogged was because of the seabed itself, along with the damp air and the beginning of the composition process. Nonetheless, the people who knew her ought to know. And risk the safety of a scandal as large as this? Holmes, I thought you said we did this to bring justice for the victims. That was until I met the woman, Watson. Now, time to read this letter she wrote me. She wrote you a letter? The envelope is sprayed with her perfume, Watson. The woman does love her games. Dear Sherlock, I'm sure you've heard by now. You weren't expecting this, were you? The night I met you, I knew there was something special between us. We are both too good and too bad for one another. Though, I do say honestly and earnestly thank you for your assistance in seeing that I return to safety. Like myself, you are someone who spends their life on the edge, taking every opportunity to show off your intelligence. And as a result, you lost this time. You lost me, this case, and the information. I do not plan on giving the documents I stole to anybody. Ever. They are in a safe place. Not as you may think. May we meet again, Sherlock. Yours always, Irene. What? She... She tricked me. Sherlock? <laughs> Incredible! Sherlock, what do you mean she tricked you? You may wish to get in touch with my brother, Watson. You may find the information to be missing. No, Holmes. Are you saying we helped Miss Adler get away with the information? I am, Watson. <laughs> this is no laughing matter, Holmes. Oh, it is, Watson, for I shall see her again. She has promised. And I look forward to our next meeting. The game is afoot. Beaten by a woman's wit, Holmes was happy for days. Irene had left him a photograph of her. He framed it and placed it on his desk. To Sherlock Holmes, she is always the woman. In Holmes's eyes, she eclipses the whole of her sex. It was difficult to place his feelings on her after this case. He had a cold, balanced mind, however. His eyes would light up whenever he caught a glimpse of her photograph on his desk. She was the enigma he could never crack. He loved that most. When he speaks of Irene Adler, or when he gazes over her photograph, it is always under the honourable title of The Woman.